since I was raised as a cradle Catholic and uh, grew up in a church that had high ornamentation, stained glass windows and the rest. Lyle Levinsky is a noted art historian, accomplished artist, and former professor of art who founded the University of Dallas Art Department. But his other career may become his most enduring legacy. And while I was serving in uh, Korea, there came a need for a chapel for the use of the troops. So the commanding officer commissioned me to turn a Quonset hut into a non-denominational chapel. That Quonset hut was the first space Novinsky transformed and many others followed. I was really renovating a, just about a chapel a year, making the furniture largely myself or engaging other artists when I needed metal work or electrical work. Today, more than 60 churches worldwide showcase his work. Tyler, Fort Worth, Lubbock, I have, a, I have a chapel in Rome and an altar in Denver. In his recent projects, Novinsky has been inspired by sacred spaces in which all the elements relate to a unifying theme. So I developed this idea that in order to organize the interior of a, of a church, one needs to uh, select ideas and the images that have the possibility of making larger connections and stories. And we'll, we'll see some of that in, in this chapel as well. The chapel at Christus St. Joseph Village in Capel is one of Novinsky's most recent assignments. The space serves the retirement community living there, so Novinsky wanted a theme that would resonate with them. What I chose as the unifying theme for this is a, a sense of memory. The painting on the wall uh, above is a risen Christ figure surrounded by uh, the whole life cycle, from the young unborn through children, mother, uh, a mother inviting uh, people in, uh, widows, widowers, and then finally a death image where one takes the pulse of the other. Opposite the painting, in the altar area, is artwork that evokes images of eternal life. The tabernacle, which reserves uh, the consecrated host for use outside of, of um, the liturgy, um, is separated by a grill that closes. And when it closes, the outside of it is the tree of life. And then when it opens, there are profiles of human figures around it, which are very contemporary, um, because uh, they represent the people of God. The tabernacle that holds the consecrated host is usually considered like a, a jewel box or a safe or something secure. Uh, we've turned it into a wooden trunk surrounded by uh, hammered brass, uh, flames, because in the Old Testament the sign of God's presence was the burning bush. There were practical aspects to the design as well. Traditionally the altar is raised up on some steps. The architect had put in a, a, plat, a concrete platform, but for that to be used by the elderly that meant there had to be some railings alongside. And I found that those were very restrictive. They, they looked like two cattle chutes. And so I thought, well, why don't we just warp the floor? So we have no step around the altar, there's just a slope. So what it, what it really symbolizes is a first, an easy way to get there. And the second is to smooth out the approach between the life and the sacred. Just, it's just a, a little slope. Davinsky combined all these elements, artistic and practical, traditional and modern, to create a space that would link memory to the eternal. But the real memory that we serve here in the liturgy uh, is the liturgy of the Last Supper, do this in memory of me. The institution of the Eucharist is about remembering. So I've spaced the windows with the Stations of the Cross and tried in as much as possible to make the way of the cross parallel to the life lived. In this chapel and the others he's designed, Novinsky belongs to a venerated group of artists who have created art for sacred spaces. Yes, the tradition is very old, and I'm happy to be a part of enlivening it. This is Kathy Whiteman reporting.